My journals have always been um, things that I like to, you know, I'm I, like kind of looking at life, I've realized something, and I'm like, okay, I need to jot this down. Um, or maybe sometimes I just need to talk to somebody out loud, and quite frankly, sometimes you are, you can be your best friend. Um, so kind of speaking out loud, writing those issues that you start to kind of unfold some of the answers to your problem. Thank you so much to everyone who's watching or listening right now. I'm so excited to introduce our next guest. I was introduced to her content by my sister over six years ago and just remembering being completely captivated by her charisma, her energy, and a genuine and authentic feeling that came through the camera. And then very recently, I connected with her incredible sister, Mona, who's also been on the podcast. And then I was just completely amazed that I had this opportunity to reconnect with this incredible human being, incredible person. And today's the first time we're meeting and I'm getting to interview her. And I love interviewing people the first time because I feel it allows us to build a real relationship and bond very quickly. You almost have to be forced to become best friends. So I'm hoping that's what's gonna happen. Her name is Huda Katan. She is the CEO and founder of Huda Beauty and starring in, of course, the reality show that we spoke about on Facebook Watch called Huda Boss, which I absolutely <laughs> love. So Huda, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Jay. It's an honor to be here with you. No, I'm so grateful that you've taken out the time. I know you're so busy in London. You're launching products. You're here with your family. And, and I genuinely want to Make everyone aware we're so fortunate to be with you. So thank, thank you. Thank you. This was the most important thing to do here. So, uh, <laughs> so happy to be here. That's the sweetest. <laughs> now you literally are, and I was saying this to Mona too, you, you're literally a, a beauty phenomenon. Thank you. And <laughs> the way you present it through your work, through your videos, through your media is so refreshing, mm -hmm. uh, especially as someone who never really consumed content mm -hmm. in the beauty world, but definitely looking to that world because I feel it sets such a standard for how people feel about yeah. themselves. And so much of my work is about how people feel. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the beauty industry itself, but specifically on the role of self-love and how you manage the two. Um, gosh, where do you begin? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I definitely think the beauty industry has come a long way. And it's funny because I've had conversations around this, especially recently, about the fact that one of the things that I think has been missing um, in the beauty industry, and we have a lot of it now, um, is the fact that people don't like to show their vulnerable side. Um, and I know you talk about that a lot. You talk about so many things that are sensitive to people. Um, and I think the fact that we really kind of honed in on that, we showed strong before and afters. When I first started doing my videos, doing you know some things that were really embarrassing, I was embarrassed to put myself on a video without makeup and not knowing my angles, not knowing those things. It's hard, um, but you really wanna show people that they can be a part of that. And um, I think it's worked really well for our brand, just you know, trying to show people that like, look, we're not all perfect. In fact, some of us don't really feel great without makeup and some of us have issues that we're trying to go through, but we're all trying to go through it together. And I think it's really important to be really, really real. And you know, as a result to show the really sometimes sensitive, uncomfortable, embarrassed, vulnerable side of who you are. Um, I think it's very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. There's such a need for that transparency and authenticity. And I know that you've even turned down deals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to, to be able to keep that. Yeah. And, and when I read that, I thought that was incredible because today in the world we live in of sponsorships and partnerships, it's so easy to get carried away. Tell us about that and how you've managed to hold on to that. That is not easy. <laughs> Let me tell you, when somebody comes to you, like sometimes offering you multi-million dollar deals and you really want to do that because <laughs> you think, oh, yeah, that's a lot of money. But ultimately... Um, I think there's a great power in focus. I'm a super focused person. I think that anything that derails your focus, you know, anything that you do that is not in your focus just basically takes a little piece of that pie of what you're trying to achieve. So I'm a firm believer in focus. Um, and ultimately, could we do paid posts? Could we do those things? Or do, when people do them, is there anything wrong with them? Absolutely not. But I just think for me personally, it was just, you know, we, we kind of identified early on that our goal was to give out free information. Um, we really want to give out, you know, kind of similar to what you do. You know, like you could, easily write tons of books. You could easily do so many things, you know, and, and I'm sure you will, but you give out so much free information. And I feel like, that's why I feel like you are the future. You know, I was telling you that when you walked in, I feel like you were the future. I feel like that is the future where people need to be more giving. Um, and I think that can kind of then help you. Uh, and when we talk about self-love, oh my gosh, like that is like, that's like opening Pandora's box. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, because there's so much to say about that. And I think if I think about my personal journey with self-love, yeah. um, you know, to get really vulnerable um, right now, I actually didn't realize for the longest time, 
you know, as a child, you know, as I've been dealing with different things in my life, as I've come into being a professional in the beauty industry and being where I am, I didn't realize that the thing that I was missing the most was self-love. And it's so funny because you achieve some success, you know, or what you perceive to be successful. And then all of a sudden you start self-sabotaging yourself. Like, I don't deserve this. I don't belong here. I'm not like, you know, not that you're a phony, but like, you know, you think everybody around you is somehow has some magic that you are missing, Mm. you know? And it's the craziest thing because I think in the day and age that we live in, it's so easily to compare yourself to people. You go through social media, you see different people, you know, as humans, I think we are given a gift to be able to live vicariously through people. But then when you're done with that, you're sometimes left with emotions of emptiness, emotions of, you know, that, you know, my sister who's a genius, she's brilliant. She once said to me, she's like, you know, comparison is a thief of joy, which I know is, is a quote, I think by Eleanor Roosevelt. Yes. Um, but it's, it, and she's full of great quotes, by the way. <laughs> she's like a walking like dictionary of quotes. Um, but when she said to me, I was like, you know, it's just it's crazy because we we can continuously compare ourselves to other people. We, we go through social media, we see all these things. And even if you've achieved what you wanted to achieve, you then do that. And then all of a sudden discounts everything you've done. And then you don't feel worthy of what you're doing. You don't feel worthy of going to the next step. And I didn't realize that was the thing that I was missing the most for the longest time. You know, that self-worth, that value. And, and I think from the outside looking in, a lot of people might be like, well, that's insane. You know, you have a husband who loves you, you have a daughter, you have a successful business. But then if that was missing. That was like the one thing that was missing. So I never felt like worthy of anything I was doing. Um, and it took me, I think, getting our investors to invest in us where it was like all of a sudden, you know, you don't think you're good enough, you know, for whatever reason. And the industry all of a sudden now is recognizing that you're good enough. Everybody is is here. Like this is this is something saying, yes, you've made it. You are officially equal to everyone else. No, in fact, you've achieved something that is, you know, quite amazing. And then I was just, you know, I was depressed. I was really depressed. We we got this amazing investment. And I think it was like probably one of the lowest times in my life. You know, and it's it was, it was, it took me a lot to kind of realize I was like missing that self-love, you know, and that was like the next step that I need to to really mm. get into. Thank you for sharing that so openly. Yeah, of course. And and it's great for everyone to hear because I feel almost from an outside perspective, we all have this belief that once we hit a certain level of success, that that feeling goes away. Yeah. Once you make a certain amount of money, feeling goes away. And and I do want to congratulate you on, your, on you. all your incredible success. You. But at the same time, it's so beautiful to hear you say that because self-love is so often lost and, and I was thinking about this yesterday and, and I'm diving into it totally off the cuff because yeah. it's, it's there in, in my intuition right now to say it, that we struggle with self-love because often we get known for that which we're not. Mm-hmm. So we often get known. But for you, you were getting known for who you were and what you were and what you loved. Where did your self-love pro- process start? Like what were the things that you started with? If someone's listening right now and they're struggling, where do they start? I really think you need to dig deep though. You need to find out what is the reason that you've been telling yourself that all of a sudden when you achieve something, you know, my thing was like, okay, something good happens, now something bad's gonna happen. Because I can't push through to the next Mm. step. Like I was putting a a ceiling on myself to where I was almost like, you know what, we've achieved so much success. Oh my God, amazing things are gonna happening. Everything's, you know, going perfectly as planned and if not better, and now all of a sudden, no, something bad's gonna happen. Terrible, that's gonna set me back. You know, and it was like, I had to realize that I was putting that ceiling on myself. um, And I, I think I really started to need to understand that no, that's not gonna happen. But it was hard. It was. It took a lot of. I think journaling. I'm a big fan of journaling. I journal Amazing. like crazy. Yeah. And I started. I almost started speaking out loud. I actually said some things out loud to myself. Okay. So this is what I think is going to happen. <laughs> really ridiculous things. <laughs> like oh my gosh. Like you know my house is gonna. Something's gonna happen here. I mean you know all these like worrying thoughts that I had. I was like oh my god. This is gonna happen here. This is my family. Something's gonna happen to my family. And I was like saying it out loud. And I was like this is ridiculous. Mm. I have all these like fears that, you know, as we've made it further that I'm going to be taken back. And I've ha- I had to realize that I was really self-sabotaging myself ultimately because I didn't think I deserved to go farther. And uh, I, I just need to be really honest with myself. So I started journaling a lot. Mm. And, you know, some of those issues come from childhood. Yes. In fact, I was going to ask you, do. where do you think they come from? I think when I, um, you know, I grew up in a, in, a, in a very interesting, you know, circumstance. I think a lot of people go through, you know, where you just feel like an outsider. You feel like you don't belong. And I think that kind of stayed with me where I felt like I never was good enough. And I did maybe when I first started, maybe I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder where I felt like I wasn't good enough and I was trying to prove things and I need to continue to working hard, you know, work as hard as possible so I could be like, you know, like everyone else. Um, It definitely came from my childhood, you know, 
but it should have continued with me. Yeah. You know, and that was probably one of the biggest mistakes was taking it with me for so, so long. I mean, for 20 plus years. Mm. Um, and it's hard. I think it's hard to shake. I, I don't know if I've completely shaken all of it. I, I know certainly I have not. Yeah. But, um, but I'm still working on it. Yeah. Well, two questions. What are, what are you doing to shake it off? What are you doing to work through it? So journaling was one of them mm -hmm, you said. Big time. Tell us your journaling process that works for you. As, as simple as it is or as complex as it is, walk us through it. So I... I'm a huge fan of journaling. I don't believe journaling should be there to vent. <laughs> I think if you're mad at somebody, don't journal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't journal like I hate this person because yeah. sometimes when I got mad at my husband, I would journal and, and then, then I would like it. forgive him. And I'd be like, oh, <laughs> my God, let me like shut these pages. I hope he never <laughs> sees them because he's an amazing man. But you know, every once in a while you get mad at people and then you go, you know, when you're mad, it's just, it doesn't make sense. I think journaling should be reserved there, should be um, as as a book of epiphanies. That's what I like to think mm. of it as. Um, my journals have always been um, things that I like to, you know, I'm, I'm like kind of looking at life, I've realized something, and I'm like, okay, I need to jot this down. Um, or maybe sometimes I just need to talk to somebody out loud. And quite frankly, sometimes you are, you can be your best friend. Um, so kind of speaking out loud, writing those issues that you start to kind of unfold some of the answers to your problems. Um, and so I'm a huge fan of journaling and I think that's what it should be reserved for. Epiphanies and walking your way through, you know, life's whatever dilemmas that it brings. Will we ever see the book of epiphanies on our bookshelf? I've thought about it. Yeah, have you? I have, I have yeah. thought about it, but some of it's really personal. <laughs> right, yeah, I can But imagine. yeah, maybe, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been journaling for over 10 years, so maybe. Mm -hmm. Gosh, that's incredible. Yeah, can you can you do you date them as well? I do. Can I you look back as to what you were doing? I do that all the time. So oh, I wow. put where I was, and it's so crazy because I remember looking through some of my journal entries, and um, you know, it's crazy the problems that you had then, but they still are the same problems, just yes. like different levels of problems, but still the same fundamental problems. Like at the basics of them, they're they're still the same. Um, and it's really crazy because you think that you've progressed so far, but there really is that inner work that you need to do. Otherwise, those issues will continue throughout your entire life. Um, Tell us about one that you saw recently that surprised you or anyone that you can remember that you thought, oh, wow, I didn't, can't remember that's where I was a few years back or a certain yeah. experience or feeling. I definitely have like a couple that I think make me think about life very differently. When um, I think when we were trying to build our brand, when we were trying to, you know, do different things, we always, you know, we're waiting for an opportunity. And there was always like, you know, opportunities that were coming to us that we really wanted to close because we we're like, this can change our lives. This is going to change our brand. This is going to change everything. Um, and sometimes they didn't go through. And, um, you know, it, it took me some time to realize that like, and I, and I think I've talked about this before, but like I was my break, you know, I always wanted a break, mm -hmm. but I realized that I was my break. Like you don't need anything to take you to the next level. All you need is your self-conviction that you're going to go to the next level. But until you've done that, you're always going to be waiting, you know, and uh, and I don't think it's ever going to change. You're going to be waiting, you know, whether it's 2010, 2011, 2012, you're going to consistently be in that state of waiting. Mm -hmm. And um, and it, it took me some realizing, you know, going through my blog to realize that I was my own break. Yeah. yeah. And how, how did you shake that feeling and that experience of like, parental expectations you studied finance yeah the mm -hmm. kind of the kind of path that's paved for you of mm -hmm. doing certain traditional aspects how did you shake that off and stop waiting and realize that you had to be your break because i think that's something that so many people struggle with yeah right i think it's normal too i think people just like you know you want to you want to please other people you want to do certain things to make other people happy but the reality is you know i'll be honest i'm a rebel I am a I hardcore it. rebel, Me like, and, and it's so funny because when I found out, I did that, that personality test and I, you know, there's a, there's something called the four tendencies. Have you heard of yes, that? Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm no, a rebel. No. Okay. What are uh, you? Me too. You yeah, are? I'm oh rebel. my God. I'm rebel through and through. Yeah, absolutely. I am such a rebel. Yeah. And when I found out I was a rebel, I was like, no, I don't want to be a rebel. <laughs> you didn't want to? No. I was like the happiest. I think my ego got a massive boost from it. I was, just... I was so devastated because I was like, what does a rebel mean? Like, you know, I don't listen to inner and outer expectations. What does that mean? And um, I think that did help me because a lot of times when people would say things, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to do it. I don't do it unless I want to do it. And I think shifting that, like making sure that I got my needs fulfilled, um, it actually helped me be a better family member. My parents mm. wanted me to marry an Arab Muslim man from like the same town that they were from. And I was just like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think for your benefit, because um, you want me to be happy. And then, you know, slowly but surely they realized that me ultimately being happy was the right thing. And I did, you know, I, I did care about, I had the core values that they had. I cared about family. I cared about, you know, being, you know, a good person in society. So as long as I had those values and I could reiterate it to them, 
then they started giving me a little leeway and um, it wasn't easy. It was yeah. not easy. My husband went through a lot. <laughs> He's a very patient man. That's awesome. I mean, obviously, this is a shorter interview, and I can't wait to really dive deep with you one day. Yeah, like, I I'm love really that. looking forward to like getting into a really meaningful, deep conversation. But I want wear makeup so we can cry. <laughs> Let's do that. Mona <laughs> nearly made me cry at the end of her, so we were nearly there. But I, I always, at the end of every interview, do a final five in the fi final five minutes, yeah. uh, which are questions that yeah. I, I really want to get quick answers, but you can go deep if you want okay. to because. You have awesome insight. So you said, obviously, we're cutting this interview short because you so beautifully want to spend time with your daughter, yeah. which I think is an incredible priority. Thank you. And you said she's your number one priority. She is, always. How, how do you make that happen? Like, how does that happen for someone who's as busy as you are, traveling as much as you are? Do you know, I started realizing there were certain things that I needed, and it wasn't super huge, but there were certain things that I needed with her every single day to feel fulfilled for her and myself. So it, that is the morning. I like to spend the first 45 minutes of my day with her. And then the evening, I like to spend at least the last two hours of our day together, whether, you know, and it's funny, it's not that complicated. Yeah. But it, it took me kind of like jotting those things down. And when I don't do those things, I'm constantly trying to play catch up. I want to pick her up from school and then I ruin my office time, you know? And so it was just understanding there were certain things that were really good for her, really good for me. I wasn't bothered and I could like fully focus on her. And so that's what I do. I just spend like the morning and the evening with her. And um, it's really like, I don't look at my phone. She doesn't look at her phone. Um, we don't usually go out either. Mm. We're just at home <laughs> making popcorn, tickling each other. I know it sounds really <laughs> basic, but that's what we do. It's like the best time. Okay, beautiful. Thank <laughs> you for sharing that. No, it's beautiful. It's great. I think it's wonderful for people to hear that. Yeah, what's you. your uh, What's your number one advice to anyone who wants to begin their self-love journey? If they could do one thing from today, what would be the best place for them to start? I think it's really important to understand, you know, why you do some of the things that you do. You know, if you have a goal, what are the what is the reason behind the goal? And I think that's really important because people always put out goals. We all know you need to plan, you need to put goals out, you need to, you know, figure out the process in order to achieve your goals. But do we ever do we ever think about why we want them? And I think understanding the why really helps us because most of the time you can start getting some of that need right away or you can reframe yourself to figure out you know how you can really achieve full happiness um, i was actually listening to something you've said so many amazing things but i was listening to something today and it was about that kid who um you know when when the teacher was asking about like what do you want to be in life and he said happy mm -hmm. and the teacher was like what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah but that is so fundamentally important in the time that we live right now where i think that you know everyone has their own type of happy they have their own type of you know, self-fulfillment and it's not like everyone else. So I definitely think it's really important to to kind of understand what it is that makes each person happy and not be so focused on goals. Is that weird that I'm saying? Don't no. be so goal oriented. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I, I, I love paradoxes. Yeah, right. And I think all of totally. us are living paradoxes. Totally. And I think 100%. there's this push to be like this or that. Totally. But you can be both. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's I think that's the beauty in where we live. You know, I remember when um when I first wanted to become really successful, I had like this negative picture of you know what it meant to be successful of what it meant to have wealth and money and i was like i don't want to be like that mm. like i want to make sure if we do become successful i still want to give i still want to care i still I, you know i want to be a philanthropist i want to do all those things and so you know as we've gone through our journey that's always been like the most important thing and so i don't think that you know i don't think that people who have money are bad um you know but i think it's really important making sure that you understand why you believe those things and understand how you can kind of counter those things as well because there is that equilibrium of where you can exist in both worlds yes you know, yeah. you know absolutely I mean. no no no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm nodding along and i'm sure everyone at home is too but, or, or at work but uh the question number three mm -hmm. is uh what is one business lesson you wish you knew earlier when you started oh patience yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I still need to learn that. I need to like go back and reread all my journal entries about patience. We have an Arabic saying that I, I do like a lot. It's um kul ta'khira fil khira, and it's like every delay has its blessing. And I didn't realize that when I was working, I like wanted things to close right away, and then every time it didn't, I would be devastated. And then when they did, they when a different opportunity came, it was always so much better. So I think it's uh, patience is really important. I love that. Yeah, isn't and it? I, yeah, mm -hmm. and your fourth one is, I know you have this mantra called, what would Oprah do? <laughs> <laughs> I love I, Oprah. I, yeah, I wanted to know where that came from and, 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 and give me a situation where it's worked. Well, it definitely changes the way I do things a lot of times. Um, the paid post, actually, because uh, Oprah doesn't do paid post. Um, but I think I, she's just so incredible. You know, she's she's basically gone through so many hurdles in life where things could have gone a different way. In fact, more than likely they should have.
but they didn't. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she gives people like that hope, you know, and the fact that like what can happen when you do persevere, when you are relentless, when you push through and when you don't let certain people's conversations or, you know, the way they talk to you affect you. So I like to think about her. She's amazing. Yeah. You know, things probably should have gone another way for her and she made sure they didn't. Absolutely. I love that. Absolutely. I love it. I love seeing the energy in your I face from it. It's yeah, awesome. I love her. It's I awesome. want to meet her and hug her yeah. and then die. <laughs> no, no, no. We need you. We need you. Uh, fifth and final question. What big impact do you want to have on the world? What do you want your legacy to be? For me, um, you know, through this journey in, in beauty and what we do and as an influencer too, I want to make sure that people know that there are choices that they, they can make, that they do not have to be a certain aspect of beauty. They don't have to be a certain type of influencer. There's so many opportunities. We've taken our, our responsibility so seriously as influencers. We always try to show the opposite. I felt like when we were coming out, it was, there was a certain type of influencer. Um, there was a certain type of, you know, um, personality. We always want to be the opposite of it, you know, where, you know, I may swear like crazy, but I don't want to swear in my post. I just want to think of it a little bit more responsibly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I may dress a certain way, but I'm, and when I'm in the public, I always try to make sure that I'm a representative of what a woman can be, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think um, taking responsibility and trying to show people that you can, you know, they can be whatever they want in the beauty industry. Like I love to see women who are covering their head and just killing it. You know, there's just, there's that paradox that you're talking about, you know, that you can still be so many different kinds of who you are and be in the beauty industry, no matter, yeah. you know, if you're any different color, if you have certain, you know, issues that are holding you back. Like we've worked with, you know, we've seen like a lot of people have burn victims and, mm -hmm. People with, you know, who, who don't necessarily have hands sometimes put makeup on, but they're doing it. Yeah. And it's like, I think it's just so beautiful. Like nothing is going to stop them. And I, and I hope that we can continue to share content that proves that and continue to be examples of that as well. Yeah. It's absolutely. really important to us. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. We've been placing these limitations. Like you can't be meaningful if you're in the beauty industry yeah. or if you're in business, you can't be a good person. And totally. The more we place these limits, we, we live up to them. Yeah. And we think, oh, I can't. So it's like who put that there? Yeah. Society I, I put that there. I literally <laughs> asked all of like, who made this stuff up? You know, and it's, we buy into stuff that just other people made up. Just, you know, I think it really comes down to starting. I think everything changes and I'm sure, you know, you can attest to this. Everything changes when you change the way you think. And that's like what you need to start with, you know, asking yourself those questions about who put those limits there? Yeah. Why can't you do those things? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So. And thank you for being right. such an incredible real model for so many people. Thank, thank you. you for showing. <laughs> like you. No, no, oh I God. mean it. I mean it. No, thank you for being someone that people can look up to in so many different ways. Thank being you. an incredible entrepreneur, being an incredible influencer, and thank more you. more than all of that, being an incredible mother too. Thank you. And Most important job. Yeah, <laughs> and an incredible human who's, who's really you. setting the standard of how a new wave of leaders can be change makers through any industry in the world. Thank you. Thank you for being a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank yeah you. rebels are cool, right? Yeah, rebels, rebels are, are the cool. best. Yeah, rebels are cool. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who's been watching and listening. This was a short, brief snippet insight into Huda's life. I'm so excited to dive deeper, but I want to make sure she goes and spends some time with her daughter too. Thank you. And thank so you for thank you so much for making time. I am so grateful. It's my honor. And, and I'm excited to spend so much more time with Definitely. you. Definitely. And build a lifelong friendship. So We're going to do you. a lot of stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so thank much. You. Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming back. I am genuinely so grateful and excited to introduce you to our next guest. She's a recent friend, but someone I feel like I've known forever. Literally the first time we met, I believe that she was a kindred spirit, a long lost friend, and someone that I immediately and instantly had a heart connection with. She's someone that I'm excited to have a friendship with for the rest of my life. And her background and experience is absolutely phenomenal. And you're going to learn so many incredible insights about business, about entrepreneurship, but also about heart, soul, purpose, meaning, passion. And she is none other than the global president and co-founder of Huda Beauty. Her name is Mona Katan, a true beauty phenomenon. Thank so. you so much, Jay. You're incredible. I can't even begin to describe how amazing you are. So thank you so much. Thank you. This is such an honor. You're, I'm so grateful. You're the sweetest. Like from <laughs> the moment you. we met you, and we literally met in LA maybe a month ago now. I think so. Yeah, and I think it was a month ago. we got connected through Facebook, which which we both work very closely yeah. with. And when they reached out and said that we were, wanted to connect, I was so happy. Thank you. And then when I met you, your energy from the moment we met just like radiated. Thank you so much. And the reason why I'm so excited to share you with my audience is because I believe that 
you're exactly the type of leader, entrepreneur, and business person that yes. the world needs to admire and look up to as a role so model. So blessed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. That's so kind. Yeah. Thank you. I, I would love to help inspire anyone in any way I can. Absolutely. So, I mean, the world knows you as an incredible beauty phenomenon. Uh, all the incredible work you've done. I, w I want to start off by asking you this question of how do you define beauty and what beauty really means to you? It's a big question. Um, I do really, not to sound cliche, but I do really feel that beauty starts from within. I think that in order to feel beautiful, you need to feel it inside because no matter how much makeup you have, no, ma no matter how much symmetry you have in your face, how perfect your body, your hair is, you're never going to feel great unless you love yourself. And also, I feel like you need to love others as well. Like you need to just have a happy, kind heart. So it really does start from within. And I think it's good to take care of both parts, inside and outside, um, to really feel your best and have the most confidence. So I, I really do, for myself anyway, I like to start from inside myself and just make sure that I'm happy and I have that inner peace before I put my makeup on. You know, that's why first thing in the morning, I'll put on some meditation music, I'll pray. I'll really count my blessings before I even think about, you know, makeup and hair and everything else. That's fun. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's not. That's a, my second favorite part of the day. But um, the first part starts within. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. And for anyone who's listening right now, I'm sure you could listen to Mona's voice all day. We were just talking about before oh, about how you, you could <laughs> meditate to your own voice. You don't thank meditate you. to your own voice. No. no. <laughs> but maybe but I'll try it. <laughs> tell, tell us a bit more about that. And when did that self-love almost become a part of your life? Like when did that become a priority for you? Or was it something that was always there and there from your childhood? I've always been very spiritual. My family is very spiritual. My mom is super spiritual. She just prays all day. That's all she does. Um, so I've always seen that growing up. So I've always felt that in order to feel completely good about yourself and just to feel calm in life, you need to have um, a connection with the higher power, whatever it may be. So I've always prayed from my heart. Um, so I think that my entire life, I've always felt that I need to have that connection. But it was really, I think when I turned around 23, 24, that I realized like, you really need this. It's not an option. Like for me to feel good, I need to have this connection. So I started looking inside out rather than outside in, and it just changed everything. And was there a specific moment at that age, or was it just growing up and starting real, real life almost, because that's kind of that age? I think it came to a point where I hit everything on my bucket list of like checklists of things that I wanted to achieve for myself, like maybe outside, and um, I just didn't feel happy. So I was like, you know, there must be something that I need more than this checklist that I have that society kind of creates for you. Wow. So I was like, I need to look for something deeper. Yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. If anyone's listening, I'm sure we all have these long bucket lists. Yes. Tell us about your morning routine okay. because you, you kind of touched on it there. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I want to unpack that more is that's amazing mm -hmm. because you lead a really, and we'll get to this, but you lead an extremely busy life. You run a huge business. You're always traveling all across the world. And I'm sure it's not perfect all the time, as I know for myself as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, and that's cool too. But, but tell us about how you started forming that program, that morning routine of meditation, meditational music, prayer, etc. Tell us about what it looks like. Well, to be honest, um, it didn't really get organized until about a year ago. Before that, it was kind of scattered. Like I had all the same ideas, but I wasn't doing it in an organized way. So it was about a year ago where I just hit this breaking point of like, I need some structure in my life um, and I need to feel more calm because I just had too much anxiety. There was like so much change in the business and just our family life because we work together. So it was just constant change. And I was like, I need to find a way to just find peace. So me and Huda together, we just decided every morning we're going to have like our own little hour together where we talk and we meditate. We give thanks, we count our blessings, and we really try to manifest as well about our goals and everything that we want to achieve together. And it really transformed everything. We play meditation music, we pray, um, and it's about one hour in the day. And honestly, that one hour changes everything. It's changed things so significantly and even our relationship improved because we talk about everything that's on our mind and we help each other out so I think having that with someone or even on your own it's just important to figure out what's on your mind because sometimes you don't know what's on your mind yeah absolutely you're just like foggy and you're, you have no idea why until you yeah. just get it out that's amazing it's so special so it's only one hour <laughs> that's a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> but um I, and I don't think everybody has to have the same sort of structure but for me it works it's just that one hour where I probably do about 20 minutes of prayer and um, 20 minutes of manifesting and then 20 minutes of just like talking mm -hmm. <laughs> and talking about your problems and finding solutions together. And um, it really has worked for me. I would like to do more, but um, it's a start. 
So it's, it's been so transformational and I recommend it to anyone to try and find that hour they can just dedicate to themselves. Yeah, that's yeah. so special. And, and, and guide us through if you, if you like and you don't have to, but that kind of manifestation process mm -hmm. that you use yeah. for your work, because I think people hear this term everywhere. I think yeah. we talked about it last yeah. time. Like it's become a popular term. Mm -hmm. The Secret talked about it mm -hmm. a lot. And there's been so many almost versions of it. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to hear about it from someone who I believe is a very sincere practitioner of it. I, I feel like it's a genuine thing for you. I'd love for you to kind of guide us through that process. Mm -hmm. Well, for us, it's typically just a matter of repeating our goals every mm -hmm. single day and kind of speaking about them in the present tense. So we talk about all the things we want to achieve as if it's already happening. And um, we spend a good 20 minutes on this every single day. And I think that makes you feel a lot closer to your goals and it's it's funny because we look back at our journals from like a year ago and it's like i think 60 to 70 percent have happened which kind of blew my mind i was Congratulations. like this is insane. thank you thank you so much and we just try to spend more time speaking about our goals and speaking about our problems and it's funny because well it's not funny but unfortunately a lot of people do the opposite they talk about their problems probably 90 percent of the time and 10 percent of the time they talk about what they aspire to achieve and i just think flipping that around just changes everything. I don't, I don't think you should not acknowledge your problems because we all have them. But I think just focus on everything that you want the majority of the time and you'll get more of that. Yeah, absolutely. That's such great advice. Yeah, thank That's you. such great advice. I think so much of our lives are totally the opposite. Mm -hmm. You're so right. We're complaining, we're comparing, we're criticizing, we're lost in that, mm -hmm. that negative world. That, yeah. And then that keeps expanding. Yeah, absolutely. And something we started to do recently is um, we just kind of outlined all of our goals and um, then under each goal, you kind of put together 10 steps that can make this happen. And I'm sure you, you've talked about this before and you do this, I'm sure, but it's just a matter of like finding ways to achieve that faster. And the more you look at that piece of paper, even though it sounds so simple, it's just the more that will come into reality, I feel. Mm. So it's super simple. <laughs> I don't want people to be disappointed because it's like, all. okay, that's it. But that's it does better. make a big difference. It's like simplicity is genius, right? Just keep it simple. Keep looking at your goals all day. Repeat them. Write them down a hundred times a day if you want to. And I just think the more you invest in that, the faster they're going to come into reality. Mm, absolutely. It's beautiful to hear how simple it is for you. And one of my favorite quotes from Einstein is, if you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it well enough. That's so true. And, and so hearing you explain it that way, and even though you find it so simple, I'm glad that it's simple because everyone who's listening, I hope you've got your notebooks and your notepads out right now, because this is real advice. And I think this is the work that people don't take the time to do. But, but the beautiful thing about you and Huda is that not only have you written down your goals, repeated them, built this prayer, meditation, manifestation morning, you also work really hard. And I think that's sometimes often lost, like the amount of hard work, dedication, the commitment that it takes to build something as incredible as you have. And, and guide us through that as well, like the beautiful balance between manifesting and then making things happen, like actually turning up. It is really hard. Um, the crazy thing is that initially we worked hard first before we were manifesting, so that's where I think we were just putting so much time and effort into any, everything that we did, and we didn't really see the results very fast. So it became until when we started manifesting and working hard that we actually saw the results fast enough. Because I think both of us have just had really high work ethic since we were children. My father worked since he was seven years old. He helped support his family as a child. So like we always saw him being a workaholic, and till this day he's retired. He's 75, but he just works constantly like now I think he's in Michigan helping my brother with his PhD and I'm like dad relax here you know enjoy yourself he's like no 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 he just wants to work all the time so I think no matter what we would have been doing in life like we'd want to work hard um it just gives me satisfaction like I couldn't imagine life otherwise yeah. and again it doesn't mean it has to be tied to a job or a number it could be working hard in charity it's just like feeling that I'm making a difference is so important mm. and I mean I like having fun too but I actually get more satisfaction out of working. <laughs> I can relate to you. Right? I'm like on the same wavelength. It I'm just cool. feels good. And I think yeah. it's important to have fun while you're working. That's like the best combination ever. So if you can find something, you know, career wise where you can do that, that's great. And it's the best. But um, my entire life, even when I was in banking and I didn't really like my job, I was working hard. I just don't know otherwise. And I think that if you want to succeed in anything in life, whether it's a career goal, a relationship goal, a health goal, or a personal goal, you need to work, you need to put the effort in. Yeah. You know, manifest and put in the effort and then you're going to get magic. You're going to get there. 
You yeah. just have to be patient, but you will get there. Yeah, and I love that. I love that you both show the balance and that you've mm -hmm. been successful through the collaboration of both because sometimes it's either or. I notice a lot of individuals or people or teams or companies just trying to manifest. Mm -hmm. And it's all about prayer, it's all about meditation, mm -hmm. but then wondering why there's no result. Yeah. And then the other side is, oh, we're That's just hustling. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, mom, you pray all day. You need to also take action. She's like, mm, I just want to pray all day. I'm like, That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. You're such a beautiful soul. But I think my dad's the opposite. He works all day. That's why they work well together. That's true. I never thought about that till now. But um, yeah, they're the complete opposite. So I think we kind of got inspiration from the two of them, like my mom from her spiritual side, my dad from his practical, like, let's work hard side. But um, I think to find the most success, you have to do both. It's so I important. That. I love yeah. that. That's such a beautiful message too. Yeah. Because like we can get lost on either extreme of hustle and grind or meditation and manifestation. Totally. And it's the marriage of both, like in your parents' marriage, yeah. of bringing them both together. Yeah, absolutely. I think about a year and a half ago when we were just so busy just keeping up with all the crazy work that we had, we were definitely lost in our hard work. We were like a hamster in a wheel and we we're just constantly just keeping up with our to-do list. And we didn't really think strategically. And I think having that time in the morning and then also something that um, one of our investors told me about, she's like, you need to schedule in Slack time. And I was like, what is Slack time? And she's like, time where you schedule nothing. And I was like, yeah. what is that? I don't even know what you mean by that. And she's like, you just need to put in an hour or two hours for you to think. And I was like, this is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so funny because most people who have, you know, nine to five, nine to six jobs, they don't schedule time to think. Yes. And now that I do that, I find it crazy that I didn't do it because mm -hmm. you need time to just kind of, Download all your thoughts, download everything that you, t you had in meetings and just all the progress that you have or the challenges you have and just think about it and reflect and create a plan. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I often say that, you know, all of our phones, we know when our battery is at 20% mm -hmm. and then it gives us an alert at 10%, but we don't have that for our own check. So like, like we don't have we don't have a signal from ourselves to us that, hey, you're on 10% now, hey, you're on 3% now, oh, wait, you need to recharge. And, and so often true. with our willpower or whatever we may be, we push past that recharge. Mm -hmm. But we all know our phones die if they don't get recharged. You know, they, they burn out. We need an app for that. We do. We do need an app for that. <laughs> That's so Definitely. true. Like just being able to give us a, an alert on, mm -hmm. on our energy levels, on our mental space. Mm -hmm. I've been taking for the past couple of months, two days a week where I'm just being creative, which means I pick up a random book on my shelf or I make notes and there's no real agenda for the day. There's no goal or deadline. Yeah. It's just to have space to think. And I can, I can honestly agree that that's made me more effective and impactful when I have to be on all the time. Right. So I love that point. I never thought about that. <laughs> I'm but, like, I need to check myself because I don't really pay attention to when I'm on E or 10%. It's just, I, I think we've always had that, me and Huda both, um, we've always had that mentality of just work until exhaustion. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think you should check in on yourself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just even just sitting and just sensing with our body, like where am I feeling pain or where am I feeling aches? Uh, mm -hmm. Where am I feeling great? Where am yeah. I feeling good? And then the same with the mind. And, yeah. and I know that in my life, I've, I've often neglected the body by focusing on mastering the mind. And then you learn, learn the hard way sometimes. Yeah. So. I need to do more of that. It's all progress. I think this year has really been a year of self-awareness for mm. both of us. Um, for myself especially, I just feel like this year I've learned so much about myself. It's been scary. Tell me something <laughs> that you've learned about yourself. That something that something that's new and something that's always been there, but you're mm. like, oh yeah. Um, I mean, I, I learned a lot. I, you know, it's funny doing the reality show Huda Boss. I wanted to talk about, about that. Myself. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. It just made me realize that. Um, so by the way, if you've not seen Huda Bus, you have to go and watch it. If you're oh, listening or watching you, this don't. right now, you have to, because it's such an authentic reality show. Thank you. And it really gives you a snapshot into how hard they work, how deeply they work, how meaningfully they work. Thank you. So I highly, highly recommend it. But yes, please, let's, let, so let's hear about it. Where do I start? Um, I think one thing I realized was just a lot of blockage I had in my life towards um, relationships and just dating and marriage and things like that. Um, I didn't realize that till the producer producer just started asking me so many questions, and I was just like, never thought about these things. And I, I realized a lot about my upbringing as well because having parents from the Middle East, my mom's really conservative. Like my entire life, she was just telling me like, dating's wrong, and like these kind of things are all wrong. So my whole life had been programmed to think, oh my gosh, if I'm going on a date, it's wrong, you know. So I just realized I had so much blockage towards that, and I was avoiding meeting people because of that. So I think that was the first thing that I was like, okay, I need to stop thinking about 
getting married my mom's way because it's not going to happen. It's just not something I'm comfortable with. And if I'm not going to do that, I need to be open to meeting someone on my own. So it was kind of an eye opener. Mm. Um, yeah, and it just made me realize I put a lot of negativity towards men in general. Wow. I was just like, no, stay away. But then I didn't want an arranged marriage. So it's kind of crazy. Like you can't do both. You have to pick really or merge in between, but you can't like avoid meeting somebody and then avoid an arranged marriage. And I just think that was something that was really interesting. Yeah, that's super yeah. interesting. And I think so many people from an Asian background or an Indian background or, you know, any of those backgrounds struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And so much pressure, so much pressure, right? There's so much pressure. And I hear that so often. We sometimes feels like the world's moved on and mm -hmm. everyone's more modern now and thinks more forward. But there are still many of us yeah. and a lot of us who are in that space. So mm -hmm. what's your advice to someone who's listening and like, Mona, I'm in that space right now, you know? <laughs> like, how did you kind of navigate it in your mind, with your family, with your relationships so that? And I love what you said, that you'd programmed yourself with a sense of beliefs. Yeah. But you deprogrammed yourself. I think you first need to get rid of all the negativity because, you know, love is a beautiful thing. Finding a partner in life is a beautiful thing. Marriage is a beautiful thing. So I think that regardless of whatever route you want to take, just get rid of all the negativity because it should be positive. You're not going to attract the right partner if you're thinking, if you feel guilty or if you think bad thoughts. So I think remove all of that and just start focusing on the goals that you want in terms of a partner and just highlight like what's important to you and the values that you want to find. Because I think if you focus on that, you're going to attract people who would work, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, take everything you've learned and just, I think you should just erase it, if I'm honest. <laughs> I think all these things that were kind of like Middle Eastern and Asians yeah, Asian, are yeah. programmed to believe, in, you know, ethnicity, backgrounds, even religion. I mean, for me, it's just... I feel like it shouldn't be what you're searching for. I feel like it should be the common denominator of just values mm -hmm. and goals in life and how you want to raise your children if you know if you want to have some. So I think focusing on that has changed a lot because before I was just like, I was kind of all over. I was like, my parents want this, I want that. And I was just scattered all over. And then I just had blockage. It was like, nope, not interested because it's too complicated. And I was complicating everything. And then just opening up to my parents, I think that I realized all they really want is for you to be happy. Like all your parents, I think, no matter where you're from, I think even if they think they're trying to control you to follow their footsteps of whatever route they took, in the end of the day, they're only doing that because they think it's going to make you happy. It's not about a checklist in general. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are some parents who still want you to follow specific traditional things, but I think the, the, the meaning behind it all is just to see you be successful and happy in what they think happiness is. So, yeah, I had very honest conversations with my parents and thankfully they were very supportive. Yeah. Yeah, and it's um, been good. It's, it's positive. I have the blockage removed and I'm just a lot more open and I think my energy is a lot more open as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that time. was the first thing I realized. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I need to stop being negative towards guys. Mm. Men are great. And, you know, I, I think having a partner is important. Yes. It's not a necessity, but it, mm. it's great. If you find the right person, I think it can add a lot of value into your life. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And before I was still talking to guys, but it was all very negative because mm -hmm. I had that negative energy towards it, I had that guilt. So I was meeting guys, but it was just like the wrong kind of guy. And I think it was all from the blockage. So get rid of blockage. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. No room for blockage in your life. Yeah. <laughs> in any area. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you learned? I love that one, by the way. That's um, <laughs> your, your level of self observation and self study is beautiful to see. Thank you. Because just the way you're speaking about it, and, and I hope everyone listening, I really want you to take this seriously. Uh, everything Mona is sharing is huge, huge takeaways. Oh, so everything you're sharing is so powerful because I feel all of us are telling ourselves stories in our minds. We're blocking our minds mm -hmm. with so many subconscious thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I'm often talking about how like the world's fascinated with learning, but the real need is unlearning. Like the real need so is to true. unlearn what we believe is true because that's, like you said, creating what you're attracting in your life. Yeah. So please, 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 when you listen to Mona on this, uh, on this episode, just look at it from that perspective of what in your life is blocking you? What story in life have you been telling yourself about relationships, about someone you're attracted to, about work, about career, that's actually stopping you from moving, your full, moving you forward? Yeah, it's very true. Unlearning is a big part of it. So I think from the show, it's just like, I need to unlearn a lot of things. Because <laughs> you used to watch yourself back? Yeah. How did and that I was feel like, the who first am I? <laughs> I was like, who's this person? Like, I just, I, I think especially in the beginning, I just got super uptight. And Hida makes fun of me. She says I have like pageant princess syndrome. Because oh, yeah. I was in the pageants as a child. So I was like oh, really wow. taught to be poised and like, you know, just 
pose a certain way, carry myself a certain way. But I really think that that was kind of negative in a way because mm. I feel like it really taught you to be, try to be perfect, which I think is just so unrealistic. And I think that you should never encourage people to be perfect. You're setting them up for failure almost mm. and you set them up to be too hard on themselves. So that was something that I realized through the show that I need to get that out of my head. Perfect mm. doesn't exist. Just be your goofy, fun self <laughs> and you'll be happier. People will be happier around you and just... I, know, I learned I needed to loosen up more. Yeah. Yeah. I'm but still you, working on it. But you all do it so beautifully. Like I always feel when I'm watching your stories, I get so happy. Really? On Instagram, yeah, because I feel like there isn't that yeah, exactly what you said, you're being your fun and I didn't call you goofy, you called yourself goofy. I wanna so. be goofy. Yeah, as in <laughs> yeah, but your fun goofy self, like I don't feel that there's that filter or there's that lens by which yeah. you're thinking, oh no, but this is our brand and etc. And I think yeah. that's why people love you all so much oh, thank you. and and are attracted to your energy because it's so genuine and i know the word authentic is so overused but i feel like it's transparent and and you're not afraid like to, <laughs> yeah I, I like transparent because it's like you're not af afraid for people to see you as you are in that moment and and i guess and i'd love to talk to you a bit about that because how do you find it because in in one sense beauty and the way the media has worked with beauty for years and decades has always been about perfection mm -hmm. like i always joked about this i remember i remember aisles of the makeup side of brands that would say get the natural look mm -hmm. and I'd be like how do you get the natural look <laughs> like you have a natural look when you That's wake so up true. right and so tell us a bit about how you've managed that balance between building this huge incredible beauty brand which is built on inner beauty to outer beauty positive energy but how you maintain that balance between not valuing perfection mm -hmm. but but not selling it like not telling people to be perfect I think we're really lucky to be, to have been, sorry, yeah, I think we're really lucky to have Huda Beauty start in a time where there's social media because I think previously it just wasn't possible to share mm -hmm. the message that, you know, scars are beautiful, beauty marks are beautiful, asymmetry is beautiful, and just, you know, now is such a special time because I feel like with social media, everybody has a voice and that's so amazing and mm -hmm. everybody feels like they're included because in the past it was like these big, huge conglomerates decided on what the ad advertisements would look like. And everybody thought they had to look like that. And I think the conglomerates thought that people wanted that, yeah. but they don't realize nobody wants that. Nobody wants to feel like they have to look like a Barbie. You know, that's just, it just makes you feel so insecure in so many ways. So I think that now because of social media, we all celebrate looking different, being different. And um, that's something so special. And I think that's something we're super lucky to be a part of now where mm -hmm cosmetics now are all about celebrating yourself and enhancing your own beauty you don't have to be like anybody else just be the best version of yourself and even if that means some days you don't want to wear makeup at all and you just want to be in your pajamas and go to the grocery store like that do it do yeah. whatever makes you feel good because confidence is more beautiful than anything mm. um so we're trying hard to just celebrate that message with everybody right now um but it is a challenge it still is a challenge you know you get a lot of people who say oh i don't look like that and it's like we try so hard to make sure people don't feel like they need to look like anybody else, but mm. it's a challenge. And it's, yeah. I think, something that the beauty industry will always kind of struggle with because people think it is all about how you look, but it really isn't. It's about how you feel. Yes. And we want to make people feel good. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you are. I hope I so. I see that from the people that call in on your oh, posts you. and all the great new products and lines that you're launching. I see that love. I, I see Thank that you. genuineness from the people that are following you and, and you. inspired we by you. We try, you know, yeah. I, I never want to make people feel like they need to look a specific way. And that's another reason why we try to post videos and photos of ourselves without makeup and looking silly and being ourselves just like every human would do. Mm. Um, because I feel like when you just show this perfectly filtered, photoshopped image, people will feel like they need to be that and they don't especially photoshop no yeah photoshop <laughs> i tried to stop photoshopping my photos i still do sometimes yeah. but like i'm trying not to because yeah. i feel like again you're selling the wrong message you're just mm. making people think unrealistic thoughts and you know even with other things hood and myself have been super open about plastic surgery yeah. just enhancements because again we don't want people to think oh we were born this way or we look this way naturally like i get my botox and fillers on yeah, the regular right, yeah, <laughs> my yeah. doctor's on speed dial and i'm like if you want to do that too here's what i did and this yeah. is my advice but you don't have to but again it's just a matter of being completely honest because yeah. i don't want people to think that oh you know everybody should just be blessed with yes. natural good looks you know everybody has potential to look a specific way and feel a specific way and you should just feel good in your own skin. Mm. And if you want help, we'll help you get there. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to. But again, we're not trying to encourage people to change themselves, but we just want to be honest about what we do. Yeah. 
And that's so important. And that's the best, right? That's all all of us can yeah. do is is be honest about our choices yeah. so that people have that transparency. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I, I don't know if you've seen, but Huda sometimes posts like her Photoshop before and after. Yes. Um, she still puts the Photoshop photo, but she shows you the before just so you know, like this has been touched up. It's just the industry we're in. Yes. Um, hopefully one day nobody will Photoshop their photos and they'll leave their stretch marks and everything else. But right now it's just, totally. it's still the name of the game, but um, we try to show the before and after so you know it's it's been enhanced. Yeah. That I authenticity is amazing. I, I think that's beautiful to see that because you're not scared or fearful of, of putting yourself out there because you don't need to do that. No one's asking you to do that. No. And, I'm, and I'm happy to see that. that Thank you. Yeah. I think the truth set you, sets you free. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's like Because otherwise so you feel you're holding on to this completely. thing that people might find out and might yeah. see and then it's un uncomfortable. Completely. Yeah, so lying is like uncomfortable. Just, <laughs> it is. It's super uncomfortable. And I feel like as well just holding things back, it's just... When you're super honest about everything, you just yeah. have this lightness and this freedom to yourself. Yeah. And I feel like that's when you have more creativity. You're mm -hmm. just, you don't have, it's again, like the blockage. You don't have the blockage. Yeah. Get it all out. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, and I read this awesome study the other day that was talking about how this is so simple again, but I have to raise it because if you, if you meditate on it, it makes a lot of sense that when you're lying, you have to remember the lie and the truth. And what that does is it takes up more brain space, it takes up more brain energy, and it's stress, stretching your, and stretch, stressing out mm -hmm. your ability to recall. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you just tell the truth and you share the truth, then you have nothing else to remember, and then it becomes simple. It's so true. So it just, you know, even from a neuroscientist point of view, it's just making the brain's processing a lot easier. And then obviously we know from a spiritual point of view, it's making your, so yeah, exactly, the fulfillment. That's yeah. so true. I learned that as a child. I think that was the last time I, I lied. It was like to my parents and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> this is too much stress in life. I can't, I can't carry on. But no, that's a great point. Um, yeah, so we just want to be honest with everyone. And again, I think the more honest we are with people, the more we'll be able to help people. Mm -hmm. And that's the ultimate goal. You know, um, it's great to create products. It's great to achieve all these these uh, records that we've broken in terms of selling product and everything, but the ultimate goal is to really help people feel better about themselves. Yeah. I was reading to reading a lot of your interviews and Huda's as well before today. I always like doing my research and hearing things that I haven't heard before. And there was a part where Huda was talking about how you're just such a good judge of character and passions and noticing people's like skills and their potential. And that's how we worked with Huda too when you first started out. Like you felt that she was so in love with beauty and her passion was there. Tell us about that, that journey because I think, I think a lot of people struggle with A, identifying themselves, but not only have you identified your own, you're helping other people identify theirs. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I think similarly to you, like my whole life I kind of grew up with Tony Robbins and all these really inspirational um, mentors. I never met him, but I feel like he's my mentor anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you're my mentor now, though. I think you've replaced everybody. I just oh. watch your videos all day. <laughs> you should do. just call me. You should just call me. I know that you're busy, so I'm just like, I just no. watch your videos. Honestly, um. I, from now on, and this, I'm saying it on the record. Thank you. Like, please. Thanks, you're so just sweet. Call me. Yeah. Thank you. But, you know, so I just always used to watch um, Tony Robbins. He was like a big one for me. I think I started listening to his videos at like 14 when I wow. went through a hard time. And um, it was just the, the thing I always noticed him repeating was passion. And I was like, what do people have passion for? And I would always watch people and just notice like when their eyes would light up and when they'd spark. And um, for Huda specifically, it was beauty. You know, she would always spend all of her free time talking about makeup and beauty products. And um, one day I was just staring at her. It was a little while after she lost her job and she was just trying to figure things out and just try to figure out what she wanted to do in life. And at that time, she had left her job in financial recruitment and she was just like looking for another job like that, that my parents would be happy with. And you know, another job that would tick a box of like, okay, my daughter's successful because she's filling, you know, a job that everybody expects her to have. And um, none of us thought outside of that box. Mm -hmm. And one day I just stared at her and I was like, you need to do beauty. Like, I've never seen anyone so passionate about makeup and beauty and just that creative part of your life. You love it so much. And um, I just started staring at her. It was kind of weird. And I was like, I had this like epiphany. And I was like, you have to do this. And I went downstairs and I started talking to my parents. I was like, you guys have to support Huda, like help her, just give her that support. And then she went down and she told them the same thing. And they were just super supportive. It was the most bizarre thing because my entire life, my dad has been very pro-education. You need to do your bachelor's, your master's, your PhD, and then another PhD. Like he's just gone that route yeah. for himself. So I didn't expect them to be cool about it and they totally were and like a week later she was in LA 
studying wow. beauty. It was kind of surreal. Wow. Um, and you transitioned also from banking. So did, you had that yeah. big transition. How did you feel when you were leaving the traditional success yeah. pathway? It was really hard. Um, for me, it was harder because I quit. I didn't get fired. So it was like I made the decision to like close that chapter and leave. And it was so hard. I knew I had to because I knew I didn't want to do it. But I actually, I didn't even tell my boss in, in person. I sent an email and my sister Alia had to press the send button. I drafted it and I was so nervous that maybe I'm making a mistake that I was like, I can't do it. Please send the send button. And she sent it right away. And I was like, no, <laughs> I didn't mean right now. I was like, let's oh, talk no. about it. But she sent it. And were you it. just waiting there for the response? I was so nervous. Yeah. And um, I thought, oh my gosh, I just screwed myself. Like, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do now. What am I going to do for like my life? And um, it was definitely really hard. But I knew in my heart that it wasn't something that I had passion for. Mm. Um, and I was still figuring myself out. So I didn't start working in beauty right away. I went into PR and business consulting, which helped me a lot. It taught me so much about just starting your own business and just mm -hmm. marketing yourself and just the way PR works because I had no idea about it. I studied finance, so it was all like new information for me, but um, it definitely helped me learn a lot that helped us with Huda Beauty and another business that I started. I had a, a business before we went into Huda Beauty. Um, I had the dollhouse. Oh, yeah. Nice. Um, so that was a great experience and I learned so much. And it also taught me, I'm not saying business is easy, but it taught me how not hard it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not unachievable. If you put your mind to it, anything is possible. And um, I think just having that that smaller success with the dollhouse made me realize, okay, anything's possible. Let's put our minds together and let's create what you want. And I saw that Huda you know, um, her passion is beauty. And then I just told her like, we need to start a line for you yeah. because you have so much input on every product. I've, she's the biggest critic, she's a perfectionist. So I know that she could improve standards on everything. So we started first with the lashes. And um, again, it was just, I think building yourself with small successes helps you get the confidence for the big ones. So just experiment, mm. that's what I did. I just started experimenting. And to be honest, I was like a serial entrepreneur. A lot of them were failures. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God they weren't big ones. They were small things. And, you know, I just think learning from all those failures teaches you so much. Yeah. And we still we still have challenges all the time. We have so many hiccups all the time. Like mm. at least once a week, there's like, oh, my God, <laughs> we're going to have to close down. This yeah. is a disaster. But like you just realize from your experience in the past, you're like, OK, we got through that. We can probably get through this. Mm. Let's pivot, put our minds together and find a solution. And um it's been a crazy, crazy journey. <laughs> yeah, I saw that episode where you talked about how you'd lost two million or something yeah. like that. And I was just like, wow, you put this on an episode. I was just like, that's that's why I was just like, wow, you guys are really transparent. And it's and yeah. again, it it's it's great for people to see the reality of it because it's so easy for us to sit back and be like, oh, Mona and Huda, they just have amazing lives and their lives are incredible. And, <laughs> and you know, there's no challenges anymore. And but then when you put that out, and I was like, wow. And, and it's great for people to see you dealing with Thank that, you. moving through that. Yeah, it was embarrassing. Like sometimes talking about your failures, it's embarrassing. Sometimes mm. you're like, oh gosh, it's, you don't want the whole world to know you messed up. And you know, sometimes it's simple mistakes that have such a huge repercussion, mm. especially the bigger you get, the more those small mistakes make such a big impact yeah. and could be really negative. But we spoke to our investors about it beforehand and they gave us their blessing. They're like, okay, if you really feel like you want to share this, this is who you are, share it. And we're like, okay, great. So. We just want to be super honest. And again, like we want people to know we're achieving this, but anyone can mm. in any area, whether it's beauty, fashion, anything, food, mm. whatever it is, just put your mind to your passion and um, just keep going. Never give yeah. up. Two questions. If someone's out there and they're struggling to find their passion, this is something I'm super passionate about myself. But if someone's struggling to find their passion, what's the first thing that they should do? What's your advice? <sighs> Where do they start? It's hard because I think I've even struggled with this before. And I feel like to a certain extent, I still feel this way because I love what I do, but I still feel many times there's things that are missing out of my life. So I think you should just spend a lot of time on your own. And that's something I've been doing for the past year. I'm like, I need to spend time with myself to figure out like what makes me tick, what keeps me excited, what what would you do for free? Like, mm -hmm. what would you do if there was no payment? You know, I think that's how we should all live our lives. And Figure that out and then just try to spend the most amount of time doing that. And then before you know it, you're going to make a life out of it. Right. Hopefully something that can cover your expenses and more and that mm -hmm. you can impact the world with. But I think that just figuring out what makes you tick and what excites you, like when you're exhausted and you have no sleep, what do you think about? Um, not people, <laughs> honestly, yeah. not, not the drama. Because <laughs> yeah. sometimes I feel like when we're tired, we think about the drama. But like think about own. your dreams. Like yeah. 
if you were five years old again and you were just daydreaming about what you wanted to be when you grew up, what would that be? And, yeah. and just find a way to make that happen, as crazy as that sounds. If you know that Superman, find out why did you want to be Superman, you know? Yeah. Or yeah. if you want to be a mom, why did you want to be a mom? Do you like taking care of people? Like, what is it? So find out what gets you excited. Yeah, that's yeah. great advice. Yeah, I, I always talk about like, meaning and happiness to me is how you feel about yourself mm -hmm. when you're by yourself. And that's why your yeah. use of being alone is so important sometimes because when we're not alone, we fill the gaps with mm -hmm. different things or we find things that make us feel happy or give us pleasure or joy or whatever it may be. And you can almost mask yourself from finding what it really is. Whereas when you're on your own, even though it can be uncomfortable to start with, as I'm sure it was, oh, gosh. like it's just like, oh no, and, but, but it does start to make you think, okay, how can I be happy? with myself, by myself, mm -hmm. and, and start that journey. It's very true. It was about two years ago I kind of realized I need to spend more time with myself, and I think everybody should do it. Mm. But it was super lonely, and I got kind of depressed because I really just kind of took myself out of everything and just really spent time alone. But I did realize so many things I was doing wrong in life, and I just kind of recentered myself. Um, so I, I recommend it to everyone, like have at least a four-hour session at one period once a week by yourself yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no yeah and it's great advice I, I highly recommend it too i think it's uncomfortable it is i uncomfortable. think i think especially we live in a world where it's like loneliness is seen as bad because isolation and loneliness have increased so much mm -hmm. but but a lot of that is because we don't know how to be alone mm -hmm. and and i think that's great advice especially for people entrepreneurs business people who i think feel like they have to be networking all the time or have to be out and about all the time mm -hmm. but to take that pause Press There's pause. so much power in slowing down mm. because then you get faster, but not from being busier. You just get more strategic. So just slow down. Everything's going to be fine. I remember once when I was, I think it was about a year and a half ago, my friends kidnapped me. They took me on a, <laughs> a birthday surprise nice trip. They're <laughs> yeah. so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they're so sweet. They saw me working like a crazy person and they were like, you really need a holiday. Um, so they took me to Sri Lanka and um, it was a point right before we got investors. So I was like literally on emails from when I woke up to when I slept, it was probably the most insane part of my life. And I remember one of my friends was saying, she was like, okay, if you don't answer the email, what's gonna happen? I was like, um, we're gonna be upset, it's not good business. And then she was like, then what's gonna happen? And I was like, it's gonna make me have less opportunities. And she's like, if, she just kept asking that question, then what will happen? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and she's like, you're not gonna die, right? And, and I was like, I don't know, maybe. And she's like, and then what will happen? And I was like, I guess I die. <laughs> and then you just realize like, we, we build everything up to be so big in our heads when really it's not, you know? Um, you just need to be calm and just realize no matter what happens, you're gonna deal with it and just get rid of that anxiety of the pressure that we put on ourselves. If you're listening and watching to this, I hope you're nodding as much as I am. <laughs> because it's yeah it's it's such the sense of calm I can feel it in your voice and your energy that it's it's not a good tip and I want everyone to know that like I'm sitting with Mona right now like it's not a good tip it's not just a, a smart thing to do it's like she's really practicing this I'm trying and, yeah I still trying, have moments yeah. where I get so totally. much anxiety and I catch myself I'm like why am I anxious I need to calm down everything will be okay like no matter what you're going through it'll be okay like there's always a solution no matter what. So you just need to calm yourself down so you can find the solutions because you can't find solutions when you're nervous and when you're stressed out and you're just, yeah. That's so. the point, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful point, yeah. When you're, when you're stressed out, you're nervous, all that anxious energy, that's not going to move you forward. You usually move backwards because yes. you make bad decisions. They're mm -hmm. decisions out of fear. They're decisions out of stress and anxiety. So um, I really, I think it's been about a year now where I've just slow down and I'm just really trying to catch myself every time I, I sense the anxiety I'm like I need to take a breather just meditate and just pray amazing yeah <laughs> thank you for those amazing amazing thank reminders you. I wanted to talk to you about your new fragrance uh, because I know yeah. you're very excited about it <laughs> did you guys get it no no, 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 I'm excited to get it. You're supposed to get it. Oh, really? Okay. Have we got it? We've sent you, it to you She probably guys. stole it and kept it okay. for herself. Okay, it might be. Right? In, it might be in LA. Hopefully, it's okay. been sent to you. Oh, thank you. I didn't yeah. even know we were getting no, some. I was going to get some. Yeah, they looked course. amazing. Thank you. We're so excited for thank you. Thank you so much. So excited thank for you. you. And and I was I started looking into it because I'm so excited. For you. What I loved was your kind of deep dive into the research of fragrances. I love fragrance. Yeah, and but but. You love fragrance, and I think a lot of people want to build fragrances or have a cool idea or whatever it is, but you do the work. Like, Try. tell us about the process of creating a fragrance. Thank you. It's been very interesting. To be very honest, like, I decided probably about 
eight years ago, seven years ago that I wanted to create a fragrance because I've been a fragrance junkie since um, I was like 18 probably. And since then, all my money that I made from working, I would save up everything just to buy perfume. And I was like, this isn't working out for me. I'm so broke. <laughs> <laughs> and like every dollar. I saw that video year, with your wardrobe. Yeah. yeah. It's been it's accumulation a yeah. from like years, like over 10 years of just, and I don't throw them out. I keep them. I just love them so much. They're my babies. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, um, but I just, I love fragrance. And again, it's because of the feeling it gives me. I think that with perfume, it really shifts your mind and your emotions and it makes you feel a certain way. So like for myself, when I put on amber or something like musky, I feel like confident and I feel mm. strong. If I put on rose, I feel feminine and just different. Um, so I think that using it as a mood shifter is really important. Wow. And I think it makes a difference. It does. Um, <laughs> it does. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to make people fall in love with the feeling they get from fragrance. It's not about how you smell. It's about how you feel again. Mm. And that's something that we try to do with our beauty products. It's just about making you feel your best. And um, I don't know why for me, perfume's always been something that makes me feel better. Like, I don't want to say this because I don't want Heather to see, but if I had to choose between makeup and fragrance, I would definitely choose fragrance. <laughs> Should we edit that out? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think she knows, but I'm not sure. It's okay, you're heading but in that space definitely, now. Yeah, I would definitely yeah. choose fragrance any day. Um, so yeah, it was an interesting product, project. So tell us about this fragrance. So Kayali, um, it's a new line, completely new line, and we do want to create a new just lifestyle around fragrance. Mm. So there's a lot coming out next year, which we're super excited about. Um, there's going to be a lot more body care and other things that are going to be... Um, different. I can't say too much because it yeah. will kill me. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> She's very like... <laughs> That's the better way of doing it. Yeah, um, but we have a lot of things coming out next year to just really make people fall in love with fragrance and mm -hmm. teach them about our tradition as well. And I think it's similar in India mm -hmm. as well, where people are very into the oils, the bahura, yes. the incense. Oud. Um, yes, yes, the oud. So I think that just making that more global mm -hmm. is part of our goal. We, we've always tried to make everything that we relate to more understandable on a global level because mm. I think there's so much beauty to the way totally. we, uh, we appreciate fragrance. So I hope yeah. that people around the world just experience it and if they like it, continue. If they don't, at least they've learned about yeah. our culture and I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. I, I, I remember even when I was a monk and I, I talk about this a lot about how you know, diet isn't just what you eat, mm -hmm. it's what you smell, it's what you hear, it's what you think about, it's what you see. And I feel that so much of, so many cultures are so rich mm -hmm. in controlling the senses or giving the senses another feeling. Like a scent can literally change your mood in an instant. Like, you know, we all, the best experience anyone listening or watching has is of good food. Mm -hmm. When you smell good food, it changes how you feel. It also makes you hungry. It makes you want to eat. And so we're so not adept at being aware of our own senses and how yeah. they feel. And I know when I walk into a space that has beautiful music on mm -hmm. or has a beautiful scent, again, I can feel relaxed in an instance. It's why we all love spas and mm -hmm. jacuzzis and massa because there's, a, there's an experience mm -hmm. for the senses. So Absolutely. And I feel that, I'm so happy that you feel that way too, because like sometimes I think it's just like a girly thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's great that you feel it as well, because I feel it the same way. I feel like having the right scent around you, even if it's your home, yourself, your hair, whatever, it does make you feel stronger or mm -hmm. happier, sleepier, whatever yeah. it is. It's aromatherapy, so yes. I feel like it really does work. Um, another interesting thing as well is I, I really think that fragrance kind of gives you a bookmark into your life at that moment because the first time you smell a fragrance i feel like that is now going to be what you remember every time you smell that in the future wow. so i feel like giving the gift of fragrance that's why i love receiving it as a gift because i'm like when i open a new fragrance and all the times that i got them in the past it's like i would immediately remember that point in my life every time i smell it again so i just think giving that as a present is so nice. Mm. Um, so if you can find something. I'm excited. You're going to bookmark a moment in my life. Yes, I am. That gift. We're going to have to find out which fragrance she doesn't have. <laughs> it's going to be our, the, our job. You're going to love that. Yeah, that's such a, I love that. A fragrance Thank is a bookmark. Yeah, it that's is. beautiful. Yeah. Like a scent anyway, mm -hmm. whatever it is. It's sure. like if you can just take it in deeply and just really smell it and just mm. remember that moment. Every time you smell that in the future, and if it's years later, you're going to go back and yeah. you're going to think of that. And my, one of my best friends in university, she gave me the most beautiful fragrance that I still wear to this day. And every time I smell it, I think of her. Yeah. And I think of that moment when we were in university, mm -hmm. just two very inexperienced girls just loving life and yeah. just buying perfume. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that, oh, adolescence before the stress and everything. But it's That's just, how I feel about sandalwood paste. 
So sandalwood fine. paste is is very commonly used in in the tradition I was a monk, etc., oh. for markings on the body. Oh my and gosh. I didn't and, know and that. it's so true that whenever I smell that, That's I literally cool. can transport myself back to those moments. Yeah. So and you're so right. So powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I want to share that with the world and just make people fall in love with it because I feel like. I feel like beauty is really, it really gets its moment. Fashion gets its moment. Other things get their moment. But fragrance, I feel like it's really been neglected. <laughs> You're like representing. I'm like, no, we need to fall in love with The fragrances. minority of fragrances. Yes. Yeah. And just really, I want to educate people about it as well. Sure. And just educate them about the oils, the raw ingredients. Um, the manufacturer we work with, Fier Manish, they're super careful about how they how they source ingredients. And mm. they're sustainable as well. So if they pick roses, they plant roses. If they take vanilla, they 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 invest in the vanilla field so it's it's important really important it's very important to me that the people we work with are careful with what they're doing in the planet yeah so. absolutely yeah i read that so i'm going to move into the final five minutes which are our final five questions oh, and this one has been so great have you enjoyed it i was so nervous you've been amazing like <laughs> I literally like, i was like so i had so much anxiety this morning and i was like oh no but then i was like calm down it's going to be great. Jay's yeah. amazing. We're friends. And this is going to be yeah. You're so amazing to talk to. Oh, you're the you best. Really are. No, no, you are. You're so amazing. You're like sharing so many incredible so insights. Nervous. I'm like, I'm taking mental notes right now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm hoping yeah. everyone at home is taking notes or Thank wherever you. you are at work, wherever you're listening, Thank watching, you so because much. you've shared so many great insights. Really? Like, so, honestly, so many. I feel many. like it's all from your videos. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't say that. It's not I love all. your videos. Uh, I've become so obsessed recently. To be honest, I found you, I think, on IG. October last year, 2017. Okay. I think that was the first time. But recently, I've been overdosing on Jay Shetty. Oh. <laughs> and I, I've actually fallen asleep to your videos. And then I'm like, okay, this is a bit weird because I'm friends with them now. <laughs> <laughs> but but you're so amazing. You're so inspirational. Oh, really. So you're my new role model. Like I got asked yeah. in an interview the other day. I mean, I still love Tony Robbins <laughs> if you're out there. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. you're oh, like man. the new one. <laughs> I'm like, Jay Shetty Aww. is the man. You're like you're the sweetest. And I want you to know that. You can literally call me up. Thank you. I'm not even that. just saying that. Thank you. As in, you, have to Thank you. you have to test it now. You're so sweet. Thank Instead you. I appreciate it, yeah. that. No, we, we've, 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 yeah, we've fallen in love with you. It's, okay. you're definitely, I was thinking about Thanksgiving. I was thinking about all the people that I met this mm. year. And, and, you know. Thank you're you. definitely that. without a doubt like in the top one Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know just just Thank yeah you. it's just been That's so one it's just been it's so rare and we were talking about this as you get older and for everyone who's listening i'm sure you feel this as you get older it's so hard to make real friendships and yeah. we can live busier lives as we get older mm -hmm. we're all busier with work and business and family and whatever it may yeah. be and so to find people that you're like oh wow i would i think they'd make time for me and i'd make time for, you know that feeling is so rare and i love yeah. feeling that yeah. So when I get that it's the feeling best now, feeling ever. absolutely. That's true. Thank yeah. you. But I've got so five much. questions left. Sure? I'm not letting you go no, yet. No, it's yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 these are my questions. The first okay. one was, yeah, I've read that you're fascinated by agriculture and the environment. I am. And so tell us about why that's such an important area for you to want to learn about. This is something um, that I also feel guilty about, to be honest, because I was telling you, like, I have my passion for the beauty industry. It's great, but I always feel like there's something missing and. I feel like the world needs our help and I haven't found my way yet and I feel kind of guilty sometimes. I don't want to feel guilty because it's wrong, but I feel like I need to put more effort into it because I'm not educated enough on the environment um, and also agriculturally, like what the world needs. But I feel that, you know, I love giving people confidence, but also what is it going to be worth if the planet's in trouble? Mm -hmm. So for myself, I would love to dedicate my future years of my life to helping the planet. And I'd love to start now, to be honest. So if you find something interesting, a new initiative, I am, I'm ready to support. And I think that, you know, people like yourself, like, let's work together to find some solutions yeah. because the planet needs our help. And Absolutely. it's for the future. You know, yeah. it's maybe not for ourselves, but, you know, it's for the kids. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want them to grow up in a world that's unhealthy and trees and everything. I think the, the condition of just the animals and the plants, I just want to see people have a great, beautiful life. And I want to leave the planet better than we entered it. Mm, that's, such a, that's such a beautiful way of putting it. And I, I get really fascinated and, and so happy when all of us have our thing that we love and we're successful. And, but then using that as an energy to say, actually, I'm going to make time to serve the planet back yeah. and think about another space. Yeah. I think that's such a wonderful responsibility. I remember it was... Muhammad Ali, who said that service to others is the rent we pay for our room here on earth. So true. Yeah, and it's just such a beautiful sentiment, and I love it because I always think of them like, yeah, like how can we serve the planet? We take so much from the planet. Like Mother Earth is just giving, 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 and and to want to give back is just such a noble, 
noble belief. Uh, when, I was, when I lived as a monk and we helped build this eco-village. So this eco-village is a sustainable village that shows what village land could look like and should look like from a sustainability point of view in a way that can maintain most of the planet that's like that. So we need to go there together we first. Should. Yeah, it's just built on uh, biotechnology and the, the cutting edge technology that's bringing together eco-living yeah. and, and humanity. So we've definitely got to figure that out. Yeah, I feel, I feel bad about that because I do feel like I'm not doing enough. Um, Me too. I met somebody yesterday at the gala, um, for the BOF gala, and um, they're working on cosmetic packaging that's recyclable and reusable. So I'm trying to find something I could do business-wise. Um, and then there was this incredible woman. She's actually a dame. She got, um, she became a dame from the queen. Her name is Ellen. I forget her last name though, but she's also working on just reducing plastic um, consumption in the world and also helping people who do produce plastic to make it more um, recyclable and everything. So I feel there's a big space for improvement, um, mm. but I hope that we can do something. Yeah. And I would love to learn more about the village yeah, and see yeah. what, we, what can we do to make yeah. this cool. Absolutely, And yeah. make people want to be a part of it. Totally. Yeah. yeah. No, 100%. Okay. Beautiful answer. We're going to do that. We're going to figure this. It needs our help. It does. We're going to figure it out together. I hope so. Absolutely. We have to. Yeah, we, have we have to. to. Yeah, it's not even totally a choice. Yeah, yeah, we have to. I'm, I'm now moving from an extremely deep and meaningful topic to something funnier and lighter. Okay. Because, because it's, <laughs> it's you, you, I love paradoxes. Okay. I love Me people too. who can represent like, can laugh and then be serious and change the world, but also, you know, and, and I think that's important for our, our wellness. But you're a huge karaoke fan. Oh my God, I am. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and so you were nervous to come on here, but you're so the first person that grabs the mic when it comes to karaoke. I am. What's do you have it? a microphone? Do, do you want to sing? No. you want to sing for us? No, 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 no I don't. <laughs> I got really nervous. Here's the that. teleprompter we've got there now. Uh, but I'd love to go with you guys. Well, no, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, maybe you two. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the shy one when it comes to karaoke. I have a terrible singing voice, by the way. It's even funner. Oh, yeah, is it? Yeah. Okay. okay. For us. Okay, yeah, for right. you, yeah. Yeah, for you. But, uh, tell, yeah, tell us about your, what's your favorite karaoke song and when was the last time you went? Um, okay, so the last Who'd be your ideal karaoke partner, actually? Let's do that. Mm, probably Huda. Okay. We love to sing together. Yes. Ever since we were children, she would make me sing every Disney song with her. Uh. But she'd always make me be the boy. So, like, <laughs> now... I and it's so annoying. That's like, so, funny. so you'd be Aladdin. I'm always Aladdin. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm like, it's cool. But also, I'm like, no, now you have to be the boy. I want to be Jasmine, but she still doesn't let me. But I'd probably go with Huda. We're, we love singing. And I think it's such a good stress release, actually. Mm. Like, I feel like every time I just sing my heart out, I feel so much lighter. Yeah. You get all that energy out. Yeah, Yeah, Great. and you also make fun of yourself, so it's good. Well, you're going to make fun of me now, it sounds like. So yes. Yeah, we'll have to find a way. I would, what, what would be your song? That is so hard for me. Karaoke was never part of my life no. growing up, so it's such an alien thing to me. And I remember going through a, to a few work events when it was a thing. I remember one of my friends doing an Elvis song oh. and he absolutely rocked it. Every guy just stepped back. Like all of us were just like, okay, no, we'll just People leave like it to People like that are really annoying to sing with. He was, he was so, he was incredible. Ollie Riley, if you're listening to this or watching this, I will never forget that performance in Chicago. That's amazing. He literally grabbed the mic. He was dancing with all the girls. He, he was incredible. And every guy just went, okay, no. Yeah. Actually, I think one of my friends followed up with Eminem. I'd do an Eminem song, I guess. Oh, really? I was a huge Eminem you fan when I was growing up. Yeah, that oh was my God. like passion growing up. So I can do that. I can rap. I won't sing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm down. Yeah. I need to go. I love it. Okay, awesome. The third question I wanted to ask you is, what's your biggest challenge right now and what are you doing to work through it? That's a lot. <laughs> okay, pick one. Um, hmm, my biggest challenge right now, I would probably say just finding more purpose. Mm. You know, that kind of haunts me. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I, I do feel that guilt again. And I'm just trying to transform it from guilt into action. Yes. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what can I do that's more meaningful in life yeah. because I love what I do and I don't want anyone to get it wrong. Like I, I have passion for what I do, mm. but I need more. Yeah. And so I think just figuring out what that more is and how I can make that happen. It's something that I still haven't worked out myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm we're going to do that. We're going to do that. <laughs> that's my fact. That's literally my... Passion and purpose are just my favorite words yeah. and favorite experiences. Mm -hmm. And I totally believe that purpose is somewhere that everyone should want to get to. And instead of feeling guilt, I really feel you've planted the intention and the seed of wanting to find it. Mm -hmm. And that's the perfect start. 
Yeah. Like not having done it up to, and first of all, first of all, for everyone who's listening, Mona does plenty of purpose work, I don't know. like I don't plenty of work. More. Like I, I recently Thank asked you. her to support some work I was doing with YouTube, etc., and and she was just wanting to support it. So first of all, you do a, a lot of great work Thank for the you. world, so sweet. and and so it's not something you're not doing. But I do believe yeah. I, I totally get what you're saying, and and yeah, don't feel guilty about it. I think I yeah. feel guilty a lot, mm. and I think maybe that's something I need to work yeah. on. Like in general, I think it's that guilt towards not helping people enough. But even with myself, like I, it's my natural reaction is to feel guilty. Like I'm not doing good enough, or I'm not yeah. working hard enough, or I'm not achieving enough, or I'm not being good enough to people. Like I just want to do yeah. more for everyone. Yeah. So I think that's my biggest challenge, okay. and I'm trying to work on that. But I'm, thank you for sharing that so yeah. openly. Yeah. I think that's part of a big part of Middle Eastern and Asian culture too. Yeah, your like parents make you feel guilty about everything. Everything, right? Yeah, <laughs> everything. You got ninety nine percent. Uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's something I need to unlearn. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we can work on that together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'd love that. That'd be so Thank fun you. to do. And so that was the that was the third question. Fourth question is what's the best advice you've ever received? Oh um I don't know. It's so hard. Or anything so that much. stays in your mind or a mantra or something that you repeat to yourself that, that kinda of holds you when you well, one mantra that I love, I think it's significant to myself and Huda just because we have such hungry appetites for progression, is that every delay has a blessing. It's mm. an Arabic saying, it's kul takhira fi khira. And That's it's beautiful. just, yeah, and I think that we, um, one of the biggest struggles we had in life is just being patient. Um, because you want so much and you work so hard too. It's not like we just want so much. We're also working so hard. So not seeing things happen fast enough um, was always frustrating and that frustration would just drain you. So getting rid of that and just saying, there's a reason for this. Be patient. Understand that you're going to look back and you're going to be so grateful that things worked out exactly that way. Um, it's really changed the way I feel about every every crazy thing that happens every week. <laughs> you know, Every week there's something that doesn't work out. And I'm like, Every delay has a blessing. It's okay. So that's helped me a lot. That is a real gift you've given me today really? because I, I've, I've thought of that often and I've had that reflection and realization often, but I've never found the right words to say it in. So true. So though. yeah, my, my words have always been don't judge the moment. Mm -hmm. So I never judge the moment because mm -hmm. like you said, like that could turn out to be the best thing in the world. But, uh, but that's, that's a really beautiful gift. Thank you for Thank sharing you. that with me. Yeah, I that's like yours too, the yeah. judgment moment, because yeah. I think we always do. We do, label it. Completely. And I'm trying to like get out of myself and just to like look down and see like what is going on and just try not to judge what I'm in because I think that um, we all kind of do that. Like yeah. whenever we have a problem, we become so absorbed in it. Mm. And then we forget about all the rationale we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And we get so emotional about it. So now I'm trying to not judge the situation. and just try to like use my analytical brain a bit better. Yeah. Um, but it's hard, it's discipline. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And my <laughs> fifth question is, is there anything that you intuitively feel that you want to share with my audience that you haven't said today, that there's something and you're just like, this is calling to me because you're such a intuition and heart-based person. I, I think don't want to miss anything. I think you're going to change the world, Jay. Wow. <laughs> I think you guys need to keep watching Jay. I think you're going to do so many incredible things and I think that you're going to be you know, something that, well, you already are, but I think you're just going to continue to do so much greatness for the world. And I think everybody just needs to keep watching and sharing and telling their friends about you. And I think that people like you are so important because, you know, me and Hood always talk about this. People want to be the next beauty influencer. People want to be the next reality star or fashion model or fashion designer. But we don't have enough people who are like wanting to serve the world, whether it's in helping people through spirituality and just life coaching or like doctors and things like that. So I think people like you have such a strong voice. You do it so well, you're so eloquent. You, you just, you really make me, I can't stop watching your videos. <laughs> you know, in all honesty, I put them on and I'm like, I'm gonna watch one before bed and then I watch 20. <laughs> so I think that um, to your audience, I think just keep watching Jay and share because you're, you're doing so much greatness for the world. You're the sweetest. That's true. You're gonna make me cry. I know you too. <laughs> I'm holding I'm back. Yeah, I'm like holding back. back. Like I'm holding, I'm holding back, back right now. <laughs> Mona, you are That's amazing. True. Anyone Thank who's you. watched and listened to this, please go watch and listen to it back. Tag Mona in and share your greatest insights she gave you. She gave so many, so you can tag her on Instagram when you share this episode. And Mona, tell us where they can find you. Um, at Mona Katan. <laughs> yeah, at Mona Katan everywhere. Please, Thank please, you. please go and follow her. She posts an incredible world and from, from everything in her life, it's just such a transparent, authentic, genuine view of an incredible, incredible person who I'm excited to see 
continuing to be a dear friend and, and going to see what you do in the future too. I, I genuinely yeah. feel the same way about both of you that it's for me when I found out about your heart behind the success you've had, I was just like, yes, oh, this is what we you. need in the world. Because as it's the same way you feel that we need change makers and people who are leading that way. We also need people who are doing what majority of the world inspires to do, but doing it so differently and, and doing it in a way that's, that really makes you a real model for people to follow. Thank you so much. So, yeah, and I mean that from And we heart. would love to help support you yeah. in any way because, you know, I feel like having great people like you, I think a lot of people feel the way we feel. Like where you're, you're dedicating your life to something that, I'm not going to say it's superficial, but a lot of it is. Mm. And there's that emptiness that you feel. So I think having someone like yourself who can be that person who's actually dedicating your entire life to greatness. Mm. I think that's so beautiful. And just having more awareness of people like yourself and the causes you stand for. Um, it's important because a lot of people don't know what they can do to help and it could be something so simple and I think a lot of people want to feel better and feel like they're doing something more meaningful. Thank you. So you're amazing. No, you are. I'm so excited to take over the world together Yay. in a good way. The world together. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Mona. You're thank amazing. You. You're thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Please go find her, follow her, share this episode as well and thank you so much thank for you. watching and listening. Thank you. Thank you. If you want even more videos just like this one, make sure you subscribe and click on the boxes over here. I'm also excited to let you know that you can now get my book, Think Like a Monk, from thinklikeamonkbook.com. Check below in the description to make sure you order today.